Hello, this is Dickon here from Go Engineer. Um, today we're going to be looking at this part. It is a lead screw nut. Um, the part we're going to be looking at is the internal thread there. That is a 3 inch diameter thread and it's an Acme form. It is also a twin start thread so we're going to have to uh, take that into account. The first step here will be to define the form tool that we're going to cut the thread with. This will be defined as a user-defined tool within CamWorks and in order to do that we need to use a sketch. This is a sketch of the thread form that we are going to use. The sketch has to be created in the front plane and it should be in the positive X positive Y quadrant so this lower left corner here must be at the origin of the plane. The shape that I've drawn here includes the thread form itself plus some extensions to a center line that define the actual shape of the tool that we're going to make. The tool definition is created as a revolution or a revolved boss. I'm going to select this. The sketch is already selected. It's found the dotted center line there and it's created the shape of the cutting portion of the tool. Having created the model here, I'm going to save this. Um, I like to keep a copy of the tool design in the, the folder where CamWorks keeps these tools for the reason that I may want to come back and modify it later. And the file's going to C drive, CamWorks data, CamWorks version, tooling, and it's under M tools. So this is milling tools, turning tools, milling holders. Let's call this Acme one inch. And I'll save that. The next step is to save this as a as a mill tool definition within CamWorks. So this converts the solid part into a .mt format which can then be used to define the tool. So in here we have user defined tool or holder. It's giving us a preview of the form. It's showing us where it's going to save it and the name it's going to choose. So it's just copying the, the name of the solid part as a default. Let's accept that and finish. Now that we've defined the cutting portion of the tool, we need to put together the actual form tool, including the shank and so on. And we do this in the technology database. In the TechDB, I'm going to go to the Mill Tooling section. I'm going to scroll down to User Defined Tools. And we have a list here of all the, the tools that are already in, um, in the database. What I'm going to do is to take one of these tools, make a copy, and then modify the definition to represent my new one inch Acme tool. I'm going to grab this one, make a copy of that and then over this side here on the right I can start making changes. So the name of this I'm just going to call this uh, oops, Acme one inch thread mill and I'm going to use the same for the, the designation and the comment 
these will be what shows up when we select the tool. Let's copy that in there. Okay, the cut diameter of this tool is one inch. Shank diameter, let's make that three eighths. Overall length wants to be long, so it's going to have to reach down that hole. Let's call that uh, four and a half inches. The flute length, well, that's on the the sketch that we started with. Let's go back to that. And that's 0.3198. And the protrusion, how far it's going to stick out of the holder, let's make that 3.5 inches. The final step is to select the MT that we want to use. So this is the, the mill tool definition that we just created. That's the correct one there. We'll open that. And then having done that, we want to save the tool. And you'll see the details here updating. So tool, tool ID, designation, shank diameter, and so on. Having defined our form tool, uh, we now need to go back to the part that we're programming and get that set up. We already have a machine, stock and so on selected. In this case I'm using the stock defined from a uh, configuration within the existing part. Coordinate system, I'm using SolidWorks coordinate system at the top of the part here. Having defined my form tool, I'm now ready to go ahead and create the thread toolpath itself. Um, I'm going to create this using a curve feature. I could select a suitable curve off the part. Now, if I look at this curve, you'll see that it's actually stopped short of the top face of the part here, and it doesn't go far enough around to finish up the run out of the thread here. So rather than use this curve, I'm going to create a helix and position it so I can use that instead of a f an edge off the model itself. I'm going to create a helix feature within SolidWorks itself. Just type in helix up here. And the first step here is to define a sketch that defines the OD of the helix to be created. And I need to position that in this case on the front plane which is somewhat below my part. I'm going to create a circle on this plane, centered on the bore. The diameter needs to be the diameter of the thread. The nominal OD is 3 inch and 20 thou, so I'm going to put 3.02 divided by 2. There we are. And when I exit the sketch, it's going to pop up the form for creating the thread. So the pitch here, well, a three inch Acme thread is going to be a half inch pitch. Because it's a dual thread, it's a twin start thread, we need to double that. So this is going to be a one inch pitch. The number of revolutions wants to be enough to clear the top of the part. The bottom's already well below. So let's bring this up till it's just above. And I'm going to add a bit just to be on the safe side. And if we look at this, this helix is going in the opposite direction to the thread that we want. So I'm going to say we want to go counterclockwise. And now what I need to do is to align this with the thread itself. That's probably easiest to do in a section view. Okay. I'm going to 
go back to my helix definition here and I just want to start change the um, start angle until this lines up with that upper edge there I can do that by rotating this around and it looks like that's going to be at 90 degrees that that aligns correctly okay. having defined my helix the next step is to create a feature and I'm going to use a curve feature here so we already have a mill part set up on the top of my part here so two and a half axis feature curve feature. I'm going to go and select this off the screen. You won't see it appear here um, but it'll tell us that it's found a valid profile. An alternative would be to take this helix and put it into a 3D sketch um, so that it would be listed in the sketches here. In this case that's an unnecessary step so I'm just going to select it off the screen. We now have one valid profile the end condition well I'm at the top edge I want this to come down so that the tool will be at the height of this bottom edge here I could measure the distance off here or I could just go back to the other view and pick that up I happen to know that the distance is 0 0.25 2526 inches and we'll get that pointing in the correct direction like so we now have our curve feature I'm going to generate an operation plan for that. Obviously I don't want to use a half inch flat end mill. I want to go to my tool crib. I'm going to add a tool. I want to add a user defined tool. Here's my Acme one inch thread mill. We can see a preview up here. And to OK to that and select the tool. On my contour, I just need to make sure that it goes the full depth of the feature. Um, that's why I made the feature depth so that when the tool tip is at the bottom edge here, the actual tool upper edge will be up here. So in order to do that, as long as the value here is greater than the depth of the feature, it'll go straight to the bottom. So there's our feature. I just want to change the lead in and lead out a little. Let's um, change the arc angle to 90 degrees. Let's change the lead in to maybe three quarters to make sure we're well clear. Now that we have our thread toolpath looking the way we want it to, I just want to check it and make sure it is in fact cutting the, the thread correctly. There's a couple of ways I can do this. I can just go into a section view and step through the toolpath. pause it at some point and step it back that looks good to me and we can also do obviously a simulation 
and check that we're not seeing any red or yellow in there obviously this is where the second thread is we have material left on now that depth of cut looked a little large to me so I want to take this out in a couple of passes uh, maybe about um, 75 thousandths each so I'm going to make a copy of this toolpath by hovering over it I'm going to press down the control key and drag off and let go that gives me a copy I can edit the definition here and rather than going to zero I want to go to 075 OK to that and then I want to make another copy and this one I want to be at 150 so I have three toolpaths let's generate those and again I'm going to simulate just to check this doing what I want it to slow it down a little let's have a shaded stock so we can actually see what's happening so you can see our first pass second pass and the finish pass and having got the one thread sorted out we then obviously need to make a copy for the the second uh, start of the thread and I'm simply going to do that by taking this curve feature make a pattern I'm going to make a circular pattern from it I'm going to use that as my revolving surface so define the axis and I want to have two copies of it I'll accept that and you'll see this now has two starts two starts two starts and if I simulate that You can see it taking out each of those threads in three passes. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Again, this has been Dickon from Go Engineer. Thank you very much.